welcome to tonight's meeting. We're just going to have a few quick proclamations before we get to the meeting. Okay, where 
whereas, and I'm going to present you this proclamation, whereas the city of Long Beach wishes to recognize Black History Month in honor of the countless accomplishments and contributions of African Americans to our nation and city, and whereas the city of Long Beach does desire to publicly, publicly acknowledge Norman Wilson as assistant supervisor of street maintenance for the city of Long Beach and the executive vice president of the Long Beach DSDA. Whereas Norman's been employed by the city of Long Beach for 10 years. He started out as a laborer and worked his way to assistant superintendent. Norman's also been a full-time union employee for eight years, starting as a shop steward and later becoming the first African-American executive vice president for the Long Beach DSDA.
collecting $200 uh, the way our statute was initially written. But there, and there are no additional changes to the item that was passed? Over. There are absolutely no changes other than striking the word semi, where it says semi Okay. Are there any questions from the council? Any questions from the public? No questions. We can close the hearing. The right on the calendar. Item one is the ordinance to amend the code of ordinances in the city of Long Beach regarding housing and property rehabilitation and conservation code. Mortgage default registry. The hearing has been held on this item already. Item two is a resolution fixing and providing for the 2019 season of the Ocean Beach Park. Okay. Any, quest uh, any questions from the public on item number two? Or the council on item number two? And this is an annual item that we pass every year. Any questions from the public on item number two? Just state the name and address for the record. Kathleen Henry, Mortgage, New York. Um, I have a question. These dates where the beach park is open, uh, from June 1 to June 23rd, um, it is while school is in session. And with one or two exceptions, uh, every year for the last quarter of a century, some kid has come in or kids have come in from the city and drowned during these days on Long Beach. So I guess my question is, um, what is the plan for the weekdays when the kids do cut school without the knowledge of their parents, uh, don't understand Long Beach and drown? Is there a stepped up police presence? Is there a skeleton lifeguard crew around? So it's my understanding uh, every year we post, or at least I can speak in the last two years, there are postings to remind folks not to so that we can enjoy the beach, but that the water is actually closed. Um, it, we also have, in my discussions with Chief Gillespie, there's also a road crew, so there are there are uh, lifeguards that are on duty during that, that period of time, but for a variety of reasons, which we can get into now, um, there is, this city doesn't have the ability in order to do that. My understanding, based on my discussions with, again, Chief Gillespie, as well as some of the other lifeguards, that the staffing issues a lot of our staff are either college students or away at school or some um, school personnel in a variety of different positions that are not available until after school is actually out of session, which would be closer to the end of June. And the same goes for the period of time in September, because I think that's a concern, and that was something that was raised by a number of the council members, is whether we could extend the season and whether that was practical. And it's my understanding that based upon those discussions that that is not something that we can staff the entire beach during those, I don't want to call them off season, but during when it's not the summer months when school is in session for our college students as well as for um, our school personnel who during the summer serve as, as lifeguards and, and, and beach personnel. Well, I just wonder if the wages were raised for lifeguards, if we could depend on not student workers, but professional people, um, and possibly retired lifeguards. Um, I think the wage is pretty darn low, and usually college kids work for low wages. And we're not talking about a preference here, we're talking about life and death. So I think it might be worthwhile for the city to up the coverage with professional people. These kids who were cut at school. No, I'm sorry, I have to say, not calling our lifeguards not professional people is extraordinarily disrespectful to I wasn't going to hear myself say that. But what I was going to say is, um, what's the chance for uh, yeah, Nobody's reading those signs. If kids are coming to cut at school, nobody's reading those signs. Okay. Okay. Can I, uh, uh, Vice President uh, Diamond, I just want to address one issue in terms of community partnership. That's the only thing I can speak to. Um, unfortunately, the last year, there was a young boy who, unfortunately, we were searching for for many, many days. And so during that period of time, I had the ability to uh, really have conversations uh, with the uh, village of Hempstead, 
um, and we talk with members, the community leaders there. And so this year, we will be, actually we'll be in Hempstead having conversations uh, with them. They want to partner with us so that we can get the information out to the parents, uh, to the grandparents that live in the community so, so that they can understand uh, that when you're coming here and you're taking a visit to Long Beach, this is the ocean and you have to respect it. And that will be taking place um, before the season. That would be a help for this for the season. It's a small it's help, but I just want to let you know that. Um, where the I am, that too. Yeah, Ms. O'Leary, one other thing is while the, back, the beach isn't fully staffed, there is a response team of lifeguards that are available during the week to respond to calls, but they're not manning every <coughs> beach. You know, so if a call comes in, there is there are trained people to respond. They're just not spread across the 2.2 miles. I understand that, but being here 25 years and listening to the heartbreak every year, practically, it's an issue that we keep pushing aside, and people or kids are dying. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Here. I can explain it, but you know, you have the chief of the professional lifeguards back there. So 
And Chief, if you could just come up briefly just to explain, you know, the troubles towards the end of the season and in September that you have to secure 2.2 miles of each. Thanks, Chief. Well, we uh, what it is uh, for the late beachgoers is that uh, uh, we, you know, these cars have been on the beach all day, and usually uh, what we do is we put a uh, like uh, Mr. Bendo said there, we put an emergency response team that we have with about 15 cars that go east and west and tell the people to get out of the water. Uh, we do make saves at that time. These these guys for the past uh, 13 years have pulled in quite a uh, number of people. Uh, the end of the, uh, in September, when the uh, weather is nice, there's no lifeguards left on the beach. That's the problem. Uh, you're dealing with all college kids that go back. Uh, we do have a small group that we can do, we keep for the emergency response team. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the guards, uh, We, uh, uh, as, as a lifeguard staff, would love to be, uh, if we had more lifeguards, but as it is, as you, if you look around the municipalities, staffing your beaches are very difficult because uh, if you look at Glen Cole, Glen Cole, for a matter, they called us last year looking for lifeguards. Of course, we have our uh, problems staffing lifeguards. Uh, so, Chief, it's my understanding in August, a lot of kids go back to college. By all, by, right. Come September, uh, a lot of the lifeguards are also teachers. They have to go back to school to teach, right? All well, our, uh, our supervisors are school teachers, which is great for the beach because they deal with kids all year. And, they, and we are professional lifeguards. This is not a bunch of people that just got together and ran on the beach and tried to save people. We do have uh, different uh, things that we train all the time with. Um, and Chief Gillespie, I just wanted to point out dovetailing on that, every time one of your guards goes in, their health and safety is at risk as well. Absolutely. Uh, we do have a great system. Uh, for the past 13 years, when our lifeguards are on duty, we have lost no one. And, and that's the, the, you know, the main thing. The main, I realize that there are times when uh, uh, there are people coming on the beach. Uh, we don't have enough guards like I said at the end of the season in September. So that's why we have to go to that uh, emergency response team, which has been very effective. You know, we also started that about 13 years ago and the kids have been doing a great job. I say kids, I should say lifeguards do a great job. Uh, any other questions we have out there? No. How many saves did the emergency response team make in the last 13 years? I would say around 200. Pulling, pulling the uh, people out of the water. Yes, and we do, again, tell the people that they cannot go in the water. Major thing, it's an easy access beach. Town of Hempstead has the same problem as we do, but they have, they can close their gates a little earlier than we can. Uh, and so does Jones Beach. Jones Beach has the same problem of people go, coming down at all hours off, uh, off season. You know, in September, even in May. May's a big problem for us, too, in June, so. We try our best, and so far we've been doing pretty good, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And thank you for your service. Uh, I think I'll just join Councilwoman Moore. Maybe our acting city manager can begin to prepare the uh, postings and some of the, the notices that we give out, whether it be at the uh, train station for folks who are visiting, and, and have those flyers around uh, a little bit earlier so that we can start the education process a little bit quicker, Absolutely. even including it in our budget. Mary Hall, Savage, Long Beach. Um, I believe that there was a film made about the uh, water safety. Mr. Moore, if you want to take that to Hempstead, perhaps and share it. Um, I would just like to say, Mr. Gillespie um, is fantastic. He lifeguarded with my husband 40 plus years ago. As a mother of two lifeguards and the wife of a lifeguard, retired. Um, I have to say Long Beach has that junior lifeguard program where many of our lifeguards 
from the age of 10 years old have been trained in life saving. People that don't want to adhere to the rules, it is very sad, but sometimes you're going to lose them. I think our lifeguards are very professional, and unbeknownst to many of you, they go around the country in August, and there is a lifeguard competition against California, Hawaii, Texas, Florida, all of the United States, and they're always in the top five to ten. And they use their skills. And they use their skills every single day. And as a mother who watched children come home, not even eat their dinner, and go look for someone who didn't adhere to the rules, it's very traumatizing for them also. But they go back the next day and do their job. So to call them unprofessional is really very offensive. I, don't, I just will echo what you said. I don't think there's anyone on the council who would disagree that our lifeguard staff, our supervisors, our chief run a professional and wonderful beach for the summer. And so many of our residents as well as visitors enjoy it uh, each year. And we thank each of them for, for their time and service and going the extra mile to ensure that that, that that takes place for everybody who chooses to use our beach. Any other questions from the public? Okay, so item one is the warnings to amend the code of ordinances of the city of Long Beach regarding housing, property rehabilitation, and conservation code, mortgage, and default register. I will. Okay, item two is the warnings to amend the code of ordinances of the city of Long Beach regarding housing, property rehabilitation, and conservation code, mortgage, and default register. Yes. 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 Season of the Ocean Beach Park. one thing. 
me that is, doesn't sit well with me. And I don't think we will ever get to the bottom of it since we are having um, a friend of his investigate the chaos. So uh, whenever you give answers to these things, I don't know if it's the next meeting at the beginning of the next meeting or during the good welfare, I would like an answer. And what I've noticed is, just as we did today, uh, we amended the code of ordinances for the city of Long Beach um, because it brings in money for the city. Every time a resident brings up something like I'm bringing up, it's always a great big deal. Um, it's really not a great big deal. The city can do it when it's self, it serves itself, and it wouldn't take that much to, to change it to have an election. So by the end of March, I would like to have a decision, and if the answer is no, I'd like to hear some real good reasons for that. Thank you. Thank you. Same, because there is no policy unless you can communicate it, and vice versa. 
Um, but except you're not required to post under civil service law or, or the collective bargaining agreement for the exempt positions. It was not posted. Uh, Gordon has a very unique skill set and is very accomplished in his field. He is going to be uh, handling additional responsibilities. And with respect to, to Ryan McTiernan, um, we're going to be able to relieve him of certain responsibilities, or at least minimize them, because Ryan has done exactly what we've asked him to do over the last few months. He's expanded his role to not only include communications, but especially um, the, uh, the, uh, the public outreach uh, component of public relations. That's where we've asked him to focus, and that's where he has focused. He's also handling some functions attended to his, uh, his position, his old position in the city manager's office. So um, with that, we expect that, uh, that Gordon will help alleviate some of the uh, some of the burden that's fallen on Ryan to handle all of those functions, in addition to, the, to Gordon taking on some additional roles as well. And we're excited to have him back, and very welcome to you as well. That's very lucky. Like, I also hold a uh, communication arts degree as a uh, communication student, a master's degree, and I actually teach video production and I run a television studio too. So the skill sets you're talking about, I probably have them as well. But um, the other one is uh, if McTiernan's going to help keep helping, Tepper's back, what are we doing with the uh, PR firm now? Well, right now, the, um, the PR firm, if, we have, if the council's interested, would have to come on for a city council resolution. I don't have any indication that, uh, that that's going to be happening at this time. But uh, that's really all I can tell you about the topic. All right, so the service is going to be not needed until March 1st time? It's not my decision right now, but that's that's what I suspect. Okay, because before you weren't here for the prior meeting, nobody seemed to understand like how long the service was going to be for, what service they were providing, for how much, when, when this all began. So you know, you weren't here, so you know, yeah, no, you're I just know. contradicting what yeah. some council members. I'm not sure you're right. I don't. I don't no, know. No, no. So at least I can tell you that, that what Mr. Sh uh, Shapiro is handling is mostly. Um, which is a distinct component of the PR function. It's just one slice of that. Can I get a couple more minutes or another minute because you talk back to me? Your time is up. My time is up? Can I ask two more things yeah. real quick? Uh, one, um, Your time is up. There's three minutes of uninterrupted. Three minutes of Thank he didn't you. have the opportunity to complete his, his question. He was interrupted. His questions were answered. He asked his questions and they were answered. He did not indicate that he was at the end of his question. Mr. Dean, are you free? No. Yes. Don't be in the wrong
the street. They're not locked in the section. I'm asking also that they be written in, the, in I've seen this in many places, to write in the intersection so that people slow down. So they'll read it. I have said this before. And I'm going to come back here until maybe somebody will do something. Uh, before you leave, Mr. Dean, it was my understanding that uh, a study has to be done before we can move forward with the production of signs. Uh, it's my understanding also, because I actually met with you, I stood on that corner along with yes. several other people, Ms. Blanchett, uh, Legislative Ford, and uh, Legislative Ford and I are currently serving on uh, Nassau County Commissioner Ryder's Community Council, and that information went there as well. You've shared it here. And uh, a study takes time to do, so we ask that you would be patient with us. It's not really the city of Long Beach at this time conducting a study, but there has to be a study done so that they can really make the right decision <coughs> with respect to the need for a sign. Right. I, I understand that the installation of stop signs and or uh, traffic lights to control the flow, that's the installation of that, I understand, cannot uh, be done unless this study is made. But the installation of signs such as yield to the pedestrian and do not block the intersection are, are not in essence track control. Although they do remind people of the laws that they're supposed to obey when they drive uh, a car in, in a public uh, um, you know, arena, such as the uh, West Park. You know, it's a uh, you know you talk about not wanting a stop sign. When there's a traffic light, but you have stop signs and traffic lights on West Park, East Park, and you, uh, you have it on, on, on uh, Beat Street, you have it on, uh, you have, it has it on New York Avenue, has a stop sign and it has uh, two traffic uh, lights. So, so there's contradictory information being given. Mm -hmm. And I understand that and I am waiting for the true stop signs and or lights to be installed. I, I just want to, just for clarification purposes, because you said that you, when you were here, nothing had been done. As a council, we had a, we had asked, and I believe one of the times that you were here, Legislative Board was here as well, and we as a council sent her a letter requesting that that study be, be held and take place. But I think that it's most appropriate, I don't know if our police commissioner wants to uh, weigh in, I think that the most appropriate thing is to ensure that whether we put up a sign, look, I'm not a traffic expert, I don't know that anybody else on the council is, but I think that once we have a study that's done, we can make sure that whatever steps we're taking uh, actually provide safety and doesn't cause some other type of traffic I understand, issue. I understand what you're saying. So, However, uh, in the interest of their own design, uh, certain restrictive no parking signs put up along the, uh, the north side of the West Park, which took away uh, parking from people that live there uh, at a time when parking is becoming more and more uh, a premium I think because of the type of construction we have. Now, if those signs can be put up, if those signs can be put up, I'm going to interrupt you because your time is up. Oh, yeah, I'm, information. Responding to your, I'm responding to your question, your statement. I'm not hearing it. I'm responding to what you just said. If those signs can be put up in the interest of controlling uh, traffic or some sort of visibility, then signs like yield pedestrians and uh, do not block any intersection can also be put up without waiting for a study. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gosling?
the prior city manager was wearing both the acting city manager and police commission hats, and somehow he was able to manage the duties of both of those agencies without hiring an executive assistant. So I'm wondering what has changed, if anything, that necessitates the addition of another uh, layer of personnel on the city manager. So do me a favor, don't answer. Wait till I'm done. The other thing is, I'm wondering about the salary that's being paid to Mr. Tepper. Another thing that I uh, grabbed on to from Mr. Agostini's acceptance speech was that he said he was privy to discussions about the language concerning the residency requirement for city manager and its inapplicability to somebody who is serving as an acting city manager. And I wonder if Mr. Agostini had any notes or anything else that he might be able to point to that would document his involvement with those discussions. And the reason I'm asking that is because I had a conversation with a council person who was a direct participant in those discussions. And according to that council person, there was absolutely no discussion whatsoever of the applicability of the acting term um, to the uh, residency requirement imposed upon a city manager or city manager candidate. The other thing I wanted to ask about was the resolution that was uh, removed from the agenda last meeting requiring three members to get an item on the agenda. I want to know who is responsible for that uh, item. I want to know how it came about. I want to know why it came about. And I'd like to know whether or not Mr. Agostini had any involvement in that item coming to exist. Uh, I also want to know, has the city gotten the results of the director of operations test? Has the city prepared a ranking from, or an eligible list from that uh, test? And has there been a higher made? I'd like to know whether or not Todd Shapiro still works for the city. How much we paid him for his services to date? What projects, if any, has he worked on? Uh, I would note that um, Ms. Diamond said that uh, his firm is being hired on a trial basis. I'm aware that they were hired last November of 2018, and to the best of my knowledge, they're still in the employee of the city. Mr. Agostini, when during his comments in response to Mr. Lee's comments, said that it's not his decision, but I've seen the contract. The contract was signed by the acting city manager, so it's not Mr. Agostini's decision. Mr. Gosselin, your time is up. I'm sorry? Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, but I'd like, I'd like to have at least one of those questions answered. I'd like to know myself, uh, who introduced that resolution that was placed on the floor and who removed it? Well, the resolution wasn't placed on the floor, it was placed on the agenda. I, my understanding that a number of us reached out with concerns regarding the item and that it was removed. I don't... Can you identify number eight? Yes, time? yes. Can you identify who decided to have that placed on, on the, the Iowa agenda? I cannot. It's a city manager's agenda, just as this is now. Okay, so then who had it removed? That I can say. I, I believe it was a collective decision, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was my understanding that a number of us raised, our con raised concerns about the item, including myself, and it was... I can tell you, I'm oh, sorry, um, I received the communication, first off, I didn't have anything to do with it being put on the agenda, but I received a communication from Councilman Bendo, who raised concerns about it. When I got that communication, I reached out to President Ramo. I believe there were discussions had, and based upon that, from what I was told, the general opinion was that resolution item was not right and needed to be discussed internally before it went public. Thank you. Um, Ms. Olsevich? Yes. Yeah. Um, I have um, a question. Um, is Mr. Tucker, is Mr. Tucker's position, is that in your budget? Is, was that in your budget? I mean, cause didn't Mr. Ryan McTiernan take that over? Uh, exactly. are we, we're doubling up, it seems. No, to there's, no, there's no doubling up. It's in the budget. It's, um, it's actually Mr. McTiernan's old position about civil service time. And the city manager's line is about 
four percent of the way through its budget because the commissioner tack never collected the city manager's salary and also the secretary of the city manager was never replaced. So there's ample funding in that budget. But is there a line in the budget for that? That's what I'm basically yes, asking you. With the raise, with the twenty thousand dollar raise? It's in the budget code. That's how it works. The money is in the city manager's budget code. Uh, Hello, Lady Corona. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate all the honorees tonight and thank them for their service to our community. Um, I wanted to follow up about last city council meeting when I raised that there was no ban on nepotism in our code of ethics and there was no ban on uh, us a supervisor forcing a subordinate to um, give to a political campaign and the city manager at the time told me that they would look into it and so I'm just wondering what is the status on that? Will the council commit to amending the Code of Ethics? Uh, board of Ethics as well, since we don't even have a board to handle ethical concerns. Um, now also at the last meeting I tried asking this question. Um, during the bond hearing, though, despite being the most important financial indicator, President Aramo deemed my question irrelevant. What is the current fund balance of the city, which is what is our reserves? So uh, those are my questions. And uh, also I wanted to say, at the August 7th meeting, Mr. Agastisi stated, there has been discussion of dissolving the local development corporation. I think we are all in favor of that. And here are some facts about the local development corporation. In 2017, the LDC had $13,000 in legal and accounting fees, but only gave out $1,000 worth of grants. The city ends up paying the $13,000 in legal and accounting fees because the LDC has no permanent streams of revenue. The LDC's board of directors has voted to dissolve the corporation. So clearly, the LDC is costing the city thousands in unnecessary expenses <coughs> but does little to benefit the city since they only give out $1,000 in grants. Mr. Agassisi, will you work to eliminate the local government corporation? Thank you. Is that the, who's in that in your Yes. It's gonna be one, it, we're gonna go one way or the other with the LDC. Either I will be working with them in an effort to try to dissolve and, and, and reduce the city's exposure and expenditures, or we're going to try to make something out of that corporation and see where it goes. But I'm now in a different position than I was before, so uh, it's right at the top of my agenda. Any other items as well? Some of the items we have to get back to you on. I know there was some discussion on potential, and the discussions were not with me, I'm just told that they took place. Uh, board, the appointments to the Board of Ethics, we now have a new acting city manager who can make work on some of those decisions. I think it was a priority for all of us that we ensure that that is up and running. With regard to the reserve fund balance, I don't know that anyone has that here with us no. right now, but we can have that information at the beginning of the next meeting. Uh, and with regard to the Code of Ethics, I, I, I don't have an answer. Well, I, I mean, I look forward to last time to, an, to listening to the answer to your question, so I ask for you to actually set some time limits for your answers. I ask at the next meeting for us to have some appointments to the Board of Ethics at the next meeting for this question to be answered, and at the next meeting then Mr. Agassiz have his answer for the Local Development Corporation, because when our current state, we cannot just sit on our hands. We need actual accountability. We cannot just let the clock run. Thank you, Mr.
of what has happened to somebody who actually knows what's going on. It seems like, but we don't know, because there's three paragraphs written that I do not know. And what was publicly put on the website was legal aid. There's $12 million to be refinanced. I guess a simple question, how much did it cost to refinance? It's 14 pages of present value tables. It appeared to be $150,000, which seems reasonable, given that there's possibly $800,000 in interest savings. It seems like you guys should be celebrating that and publishing it all over the place. But you don't talk about what was redeemed, what is the possible ramifications of it. Did you talk about the duration? I mean, these bonds are going to be paid out at the same duration. They're going to insure at the same time. Did anybody talk about shortening? Did anybody talk about longing, making the bonds longer? So we have even more cash flow savings, considering our cash flow here. Did anybody talk about the other bonds that we have? We've got millions and millions of dollars of bonds, and you have three paragraphs, which are unclear. So communication is really important. And the last sentence on the public website says, if you want to really look at it, come to the office. We'll show you. That doesn't seem like it's something that really wants, you guys really want to tell. And this is something good. So it makes everybody very skeptical. This is like a really good thing. I don't know how you can talk about it. I've got a lot of bad news. So my point of the whole thing is, I think you have to be a lot more clearer and transparent in what you're doing. And you can get the trust of the people. And you get the trust of the people. And everybody will work with you and help you and not have back and forth. And if you need some help, you can ask the public. I'll be able to help. Other people will be able to help. You just try to be transparent. I'd like to say that a lot of information was provided to the city council when we were really in the thick of the decision about whether or not to refi. Now, that information, I was in that last meeting. That information may or may not have been effectively conveyed. We brought in our financial consultant, former controller. Can you answer that quick basic question? How much was it? I just want to show you. Sure. I just want to know if I can say it. That was confirmed. And that was conveyed effectively. I agree with you. And we should do something to disseminate that information in a manner which really boils it down to its basics. So I agree with you. And perhaps we can do that. And I think on not just that issue, but every other issue. That doesn't disclose more than less. But this is big money. Really big money. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not talking a few thousand dollars here. It's a big time money. No, we consider it a major coup. And we should be promoting it. I agree. And the second note, and Ms. Moore did say that after I asked my questions, that there was this sense of discussions. But behind closed doors, not out here, but everybody here was going on. Thank you, sir. Ms. Lentz. Thank you, Your Honor.
residents or our journalists there could access data. Um, and we can also track how our tax dollars are spent. Uh, this is a really great way of restoring public trust as well. Um, so I'm just going to throw that at you. As far as Mr. Dean, we, we did meet with him and his issues are valid. I'd like everyone up here, and I've said this before, just Google tactical urbanism. Same thing for you, Mr. Dean. Tactical urbanism. Um, signs and markings on the street can be effective for some people some of the time, but good engineering is good for all people all of the time, so it really is an engineering issue. Um, and if a resident feels that he is not being heard when it comes to a transportation issue, well, I certainly know what that feels like. I haven't been heard for many years. Um, perhaps a public safety or a transportation committee could serve residents well. Now let's talk about our committees in our, in our board, shall we? Um, there are currently several committees with appointed members who are not required to meet they have no city presence, rendering them inefficient and ineffective on meeting the needs of residents. I would really love to see commissions, boards, whatever you call them, a look at them again. As, as Eddie Grona was talking about, the ethics committee is a really great start. Yeah. Also, East Atlantic Beach is trying to lower their speed limit. Uh, website, website redesign. Would anyone like to speak about that? We, I believe everyone knows that our website is not ADA compliant. Well, why don't we just finish up your comment and then we can That's, I can't really read my writing, so we'll just end it there. I mean, can you? Just to the website, it is in a state of redesign right now. I've seen, uh, I've seen an advance, but we're going to be testing uh, functionality and we're going to some of the aesthetics with um, with our uh, with Long Beach High School actually, and we're having high school students work for us. All right, and uh, well, with that, keep in mind the open data thing as well, because that would also be like an online thing. Um, also, I kind of like the atmosphere in here. Nerd <laughs> in. Thank you, Ms. Lunchez. You're welcome. Nora Egan. Nora Egan, uh, 340 Long Beach. Ms. Diamond, I'm assuming you're stepping in for our vice president, or for President Obama tonight? I am. Yes, yeah, so you didn't address the questions from last week at the beginning of the developer? I do not have the answers but I'm sure that President Obama will give them to you when he is at the next So the President is the only one who is privy to any of the rights? I don't have the answers to the question, I'm sorry. Okay, notice. Um, so my other question is, Mr. Kalinowski, can you just speak into the microphone a little bit? We find it really difficult to hear you. You're very soft-spoken, which is nice to hear. I apologize because I promise you I don't hear that very often. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, we were just talking, but here your answers. Um, so I missed a couple of meetings, so I'm a little bit out of the loop with the PR, um, what's going on, who's working where. So I believe Mr. McTiernan was PR, then we hired a firm. The firm that we hired, I believe, is based in Suffolk. Was there a bid to hire this firm? Even if it was one month, two months, are we on a month-to-month -month contract? And was there a reason why we didn't have to look at any of the local companies? I believe there's two PR companies in Long Beach. Is there, who found Mr. Shapiro's company? You can just look through your comments. So that's it. As far as as far as public relations, we did the research on that, and it's a professional service that's uh, that's exempt from the normal competitive procurement rules. So you reached out to him, like you did, a, or not you personally? Right. Somebody in the city reached out, said we need a PR company, and let's overlook the local companies, or the local companies aren't presumably. I was involved. Capable of it. Presumably. Sure. Okay, and so once then I I know it's three minutes left. I know I said that my questions are finished. 
So once Mr. Shapiro was hired, he was vanished, and his record was looked into, and who vanished him, who would have vanished him, all the council, or whoever does procurement, and who does procurement? I can't answer. I don't know the answer to that question. Okay, so I'm sure I've got them too. Thank you. Any questions?
Thank you. Thank you for coming because climate change is real. I hope that we can have a continued conversation. Thank you very much.